In this problem, we're told that 0.45 moles of H2S is placed in a 3 liter container at 700 degrees. We're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentration of hydrogen gas at this temperature. So here we're given the equilibrium constant at 700 degrees Celsius. So we need to determine the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and the products. How do we do this? First thing we need to do is set up an equilibrium concentration table. And how I do that is I write the balanced equation like so and we want the initial concentrations, we want the change in concentration as the reaction proceeds, and then the equilibrium concentrations. So let's take a look at what we're given here. We're told that 0.45 moles of H2S is placed in a 3 liter container. Now remember, our equilibrium concentrations are going to be in moles per liter. So let's go ahead and calculate the molarity here. So what we have is 0 0.45 moles divided by 3 liters. And this will give us the concentration of the H2S. So let's calculate that. And I get 0 0.15 molar. Okay. I'm going to put this into my table for the initial concentration. So I have 0 0.15 molar. And then, of course, initially I would have 0 hydrogen and 0 sulfur. Now, we want to determine the change. Okay, remember, the reactant is going to decrease by some concentration as the reaction proceeds. And why don't we call that concentration X? So it is going to decrease by X. Now, in this case, we have a coefficient of 2. So it's going to decrease by some amount 2X. So this would be the change for the reactant. Now, at the same time, our reactant concentration is decreasing, our product concentrations will increase. So in the case of hydrogen, again, we have this coefficient here. This would increase by a concentration 2x, and of course, sulfur by a concentration x. Remember, the coefficient here is 1. So we have our change. Now let's put this together for equilibrium. So at equilibrium, the concentration of H2S is going to be 0.15 molar minus 2x. Our concentration of hydrogen will just be 2x and our concentration of sulfur will be x. So what we need to do is determine x. Well, let's go ahead and write out our equilibrium constant expression. That would be k is equal to Remember, it's the concentrations of products. So we have hydrogen, and that's to the second power. Remember, coefficients become the exponents times the concentration of the sulfur divided by the concentration of the H2S. And again, our coefficient becomes the exponent. And now we're just ready to plug everything in. We know what kc is, we're given that, so that is 9.30 times 10 to the negative 8, and that is going to be equal to this expression here. So let's go ahead and put the concentrations in. So start with hydrogen, we are going to have at equilibrium 2x, so that's going to be 2x, that's 2x squared. Don't forget the exponent. That you know, a lot of times students forget the exponent, and of course you're going to get the wrong answer. Times the concentration of the sulfur. So that's just going to be x, no exponent. We have a coefficient of one divided by the concentration of H2S. And again, these are equilibrium concentration. One five 
minus 2x quantity squared. We need to solve this expression for x. Now, what we can do is make an assumption here. Look at k. k is very small. It's 10 to the negative 8. So I'm going to make the following assumption. What I want to do is simplify my, my expression. So I'm going to make the assumption that 0.15 minus 2x is approximately equal to 0 0.15 molar. In other words, what I'm saying is that this concentration is going to be so small that it's not going to affect this. All right, it's going to be a very small concentration. How do I know? Well, I look at my equilibrium constant. It's 10 to the negative 8. That is a very small equilibrium constant. So that means very little H2S is going to dissociate. So here's our assumption, and we'll go back to this in a minute because we do have to check our assumption. So this simplifies things by quite a bit. So now what I have is 9.30 times 10 to the negative 8 is equal to 2x quantity squared times x over 0 0.15. So now I can work on simplifying this. So here I'm going to have 4x squared times x, which would give us 4x cubed over 0 0.15. Basically what I want to do here is solve 4x. So here's the expression, 9.30 times 10 to the negative 8 equals 4x cubed divided by 0 0.15. So at this point, I assume you can solve for x. So solve for x. And we'll see when we solve for x that x is going to be equal to 8.057. I'm going to keep several digits here and round up at the end times 10 to the negative 4 molar. Okay, so now I can determine the concentration of the hydrogen at equilibrium. Let's go back to our table. And at equilibrium, the concentration of hydrogen gas would be 2 times x. So let's just go ahead and do that. We have 2 times, and x is 8.057 times 10 to the negative 4 molar. And that is going to give us 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. I have to check my assumption. And remember, we said that 0.15 minus 2x is approximately equal to 0.15 molar. We have to go ahead and calculate that. So I'll just go ahead and take 0.15 minus 2x, which we know is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And that gives me 0 0.148 molar, which is approximately 0 0.15 molar. So my assumption was correct. If the assumption would not have been correct, what we would have needed to do is go to this original expression here, right here, and we would have needed to keep the 2x in the denominator and then just solve for x. It would have just made the calculation a little messier. So it was nice to be able to use the assumption. Another way that we could have made our assumption would have been like so we could have used the 5% rule. Basically, we would take the 2x, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 3 molar, and divided that by the original concentration of 0.15, multiply by 100, and that would have given us 1.1%.
1.1% is less than 5%. So as long as that is less than 5%, our assumption is fine. I prefer to use method one to check my assumptions.